After a really rough start to their career, can this Red Sox bullpen arm become the Red Sox secret weapon? What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin and for the most part this season the Red Sox bullpen's been fairly solid. I think a lot of that has to do especially in close games with there now being structure in the bullpen right? You know who's coming in to close games, you know who's coming in to set up that closer and you know who now has the middle innings. And it feels like for the Red Sox every year someone becomes that secret weapon in this Red Sox bullpen. In 2021 you had Garrett Whitlock, in 2022 you had John Schreiber and now in 2023 could josh winkowski be that guy that is what we're going to do today we are going to examine what is making josh winkowski so successful early on in this season and why he is becoming a red sox secret weapon and we're going to talk about whether or not this success is sustainable and how he can make it sustainable but before we get into that a quick word from today's sponsor did you know that in the u.s alone someone becomes a victim of identity fraud every 14 seconds Aura does. That's why Aura set out and built a comprehensive shield to help you protect you and your loved ones from the dangers of online security threats. Aura is simple and easy to use, but extremely effective at preventing fraud on your behalf. They watch over your credit, transactions, personal information, and they scour the internet to ensure that no one is using your information in any way aside from you and people you approve of. I signed up for Aura myself, and within minutes, over 25 online threats to my identity were identified and taken care of. Care of. Every Aura subscription also includes a $1 million identity theft insurance policy to cover any legal fees and losses due to identity theft, as well as a 24 7 customer support helpline. Sign up is easy and takes little to no time at all. All you have to do is enter a few of your details, and Aura will do the rest. And as part of their efforts to make the internet safer for everyone, Aura is offering viewers of this channel a 14 day free trial of Aura's security software. All you to do is enter the link shown on screen which is aura.com backslash red seat radio or click the link in the description below to get started again head to aura.com backslash red seat radio to start your 14 day free trial today thank you to aura for sponsoring this video thank you specifically for clicking on this video Let's get into it. It's really not a stretch of the imagination to say that over the course of this season so far, Josh Winkowski has been the most reliable and consistent pitcher on this Red Sox pitching staff. Now I'm recording this video on Thursday, so there may be some updates to these statistics, but at the time of this recording, Josh Winkowski has appeared in nine innings for the Boston Red Sox, all of them in relief. And in those nine innings, Josh Winkowski has allowed just one singular run, making his ERA a one even. Now taking a look at some other outside statistics for Josh Winkowski, his FIP is sitting right now at 1.96, which may indicate that there has been a little bit of luck on Josh Winkowski's side through the first nine innings of his season. But still having a FIP at 1.96 also indicates that it's not that much luck, right? If it was at like 2.73, then we'd have a bit of a bigger issue in terms of how well he's actually pitching. But a FIP sitting at 1.96, is still fantastic. There's also another absurd statistic on his page right now, and that is the fact that his ERA plus is sitting at 496. That hypothetically means that at the time of this recording, Josh Winkowski is 496% more productive than the average pitcher in baseball. Now, obviously that statistic is a bit inflated because of the sample size. So it's hard to come to any sort of conclusions on his on paper statistics. So a bit of a better way to look at how successful Josh Winkowski has been so far is to compare him to his peers, compare him and how he ranks in terms of percentiles to the average pitcher pitcher in Major League Baseball. So let's take a look at his baseball savant page. Looking at this baseball savant page, Josh Winkowski has a lot of red, which is a really good sign. Specifically, Josh Winkowski right now ranks at the top of the league in walk rate, expected batting average, expected slugging percentage, barrel percentage, chase rate, and extension. He also ranks above average in exit velocity and strikeout rate. Again, it's a small sample size, right? But at the same time too, this is great indication indications that Josh Winkowski may have found something in the bullpen because what this baseball savant page is telling us is that he's executing pitches, right? He's not walking a lot of guys and the pitches that are in the strike zone are getting a lot of swings, but they're not getting a lot of hard contact. His chase rate is really high, but 
but his barrel percentage is low, his expected batting average is low, and his expected slugging percentage is low as well. What that indicates is that hitters are swinging a lot at his pitches, but they aren't making hard contact, which is a very good sign, especially early on in the 2023 season. And it's something that could indicate that, hey, this may be something that he can continue over the course of a 162 game season. But what happened here, right? How did Josh Winkowski go from a guy who just one year ago finished the year with a 5.89 ERA? How did he go from a guy who a lot of us did not want to see in a Red Sox uniform anytime soon to a guy who we're making a video about being the secret weapon for this Red Sox bullpen? What changed. I think the biggest difference between 2022 Josh Winkowski and 2023 Josh Winkowski for the most part, if not almost all, comes from the mental side of this game, right? Last year, Josh Winkowski was extremely emotional on the mound. You could tell immediately when he was either upset with a pitch that he'd thrown or the outcome of a pitch that he'd thrown. And then once he get once he got back into the dugout, you could immediately tell whether or not Josh Winkowski thought he had a good start or a bad start. He would be on the bench, sulking, not really talking to anybody, not paying attention to the game. He was focused on how poorly he did in that game. Then off the field as well, in the media, talking to the media, he would say things, especially after bad starts that honestly, he didn't really have any business saying, right? He talked about the Cubs stadium after his start in Chicago, where he got rocked a little bit. And then he talked about how he did not think the Yankees lineup was intimidating after he'd just given up a crap ton of runs. That is not the mentality you need to have as a pitcher in major league baseball going into this year in the words of josh winkowski himself he's completely changed that approach during an interview with ness and josh winkowski mentioned that last year he found himself on the mound thinking a lot about previous mistakes that he had made on the mound in that game to specific batters or he found himself thinking a lot about what is going to happen next what are some future scenarios that he could find himself in as opposed to trying to execute the pitch at hand right going into 2023 josh winkowski is focused on one thing and one thing only the current pitch he has to throw executing that current pitch and once that pitch is over with he's moving on to the next one a little bit of a goldfish mentality which i think is a fantastic switch up from what we saw last year on top of that too josh winkowski also mentioned that last year one of the things he was really trying to do was rack up a ton of strikeouts he wanted to be a big strikeout guy and it simply was not working out so going into 2023 he changed that mentality as well he's He's now looking at it as he's trying to generate weak contact. He's not trying to blow guys away. He's just trying to execute his pitches. And funnily enough, this strategy is actually working out really well for him because this year he has a higher strikeouts per nine than he did in 2022, where he was actually trying to focus on strikeouts. So very good signs from Josh Winkowski in terms of mentality. Now, in my opinion, the other reason Josh Winkowski looks so much better this year than he did last year is because right now he's coming out of the bullpen to pitch one, two, three innings, as opposed to coming into a start and having to stretch over four, five, six innings. He's now allowed to really empty the tank very quickly, and that's causing an uptick in his velocity, which on average is much higher than it was last year. One of the other things that could be helping Josh Winkowski sustain this success is more of a reliance on his slider. Last year, Josh Winkowski was throwing a lot of fastballs, and Josh Winkowski is not a flamethrower. Relying on his slider more in 2020, 23 is allowing Josh Winkowski to generate more weak contact. So combine all three of those things and is any of this sustainable? Obviously, I don't know if a one ERA even is going to be something we see from Josh Winkowski all year, but the mental side of this game is extremely important. And for me, Josh Winkowski being able to completely mentally adjust and come into the 2023 season with an entirely different mentality is something that he should be able to maintain. We're going to see though, because obviously there are going to be road bumps throughout a 162 game season. If he can maintain his mentality throughout those road bumps, I think Josh Winkowski could be extremely successful because you add that mentality onto the fact that he is throwing at a higher velocity and that he's relying more on his slider to generate weak contact, he could be a really successful pitcher. And one of the things that I think is going to be huge in terms of maintaining this mentality and one of the reasons why I think he can maintain it is because he has the help of veteran presence.
presence in this bullpen. Chris Martin, Kenley Jansen are guys that the Red Sox brought in who have been very successful at the major league level. Them being able to mentor Josh and let him know that, hey, look, this was a bad outing or you're having a bad stretch. Here's what I do and here's how you can get out of it and put yourself back on the right track before it completely falls off the rails is going to be crucial in Josh Winkowski's development. Now, whether or not he stays the secret weapon for this Red Sox team is a different question. But again, if he could do all of those things successfully over the course of the next couple of months, I think it's not a far stretch to say that Josh Winkowski is the Red Sox secret weapon in the bullpen in 2023. But that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of Josh Winkowski so far this year? What do you think of his role on this Red Sox team? Do you like him? Do you not like him? What are your thoughts as to what he could look like over the course of a 162 game season? Let me know all your thoughts on this topic down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe and like button. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you to Aura once again for sponsoring this video and thank you for clicking on this video. I will see you all in the red seats.